Laughter is good for you. Well, do you laugh a lot? Because if you don't, there is something that will make you laugh. The laughing gas. Yes, it's true that laughing gas makes you a little high and laugh uncontrollably. It is widely used across dentists as an anesthetic. You're about to know what is laughing gas basically. What happens to your brain when you inhale laughing gas? What are the health risks and is it addictive? Here's why laughing gas makes you laugh. Laughing gas, formerly known as nitrous oxide, is a colorless gas at room temperature and is non-flammable. It has a slightly metallic taste and smell. It's been used by dentists since 1800. The idea of laughing gas has been depicted in movies as well, where people instantly start laughing upon inhaling the gas. The exciting story of laughing gas began in 1799 upon the discovery of brainy chemist Humphrey Davy. He didn't use any rats, rabbits or whatever animals to test the gas, but instead he let himself become the subject of the experiment. According to some sources, he had intense experiences after breathing a massive amount of gas. Nitrous oxide triggers the release of dopamine molecules in our body. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter and plays an important role in the reward system of our body. Our reward system is basically when our body rewards us for doing a particular action. In this case, the reward is dopamine secretion. Therefore, technically, nitrous oxide makes a person euphoric. In this state, people feel happy, which leads them to laugh and giggle. The effect of the gas also starts quickly, within minutes of its inhalation. Your dentist may offer you a laughing gas to make you more comfortable during a certain procedure. However, it can be neurotoxic. Due to its anesthetic effects, it is suspected to having the capability to cause paralysis. Inhalation of laughing gas also presents a risk of hyperoxia, which is basically when your brain is starved of oxygen. As you know now that nitrous oxide triggers the release of dopamine, which is the same chemical responsible for addiction to substances like nicotine, cocaine, heroin, etc. But it doesn't trigger compulsive behavior like other drugs such as nicotine, marijuana and cocaine. There is insufficient data to draw an informed conclusion as to whether it can be classified as a psychoactive drug or not. Let us know if you find this video interesting and do check some of our other stuff.